welcome back to another video it is spring on the small holding it's early april and i thought it would be nice to have a chat with you and to show you around because it's been a little while the last one we did was in january um and a lot's changed since then and even more is going to change in between now and the next one so might be a bit like a bus where you don't get them for a while and they all turn up at once because i have a feeling the next tour might be out pretty quickly i'm in the outdoor kitchen this is a snippet we haven't done the big reveal yet because we're not totally finished but i did allude to all of the work that we've got started with again on the last video well it's just been full speed ahead stephen has been working so hard doing this and um i'm just absolutely thrilled with how it's turned out so we are literally just starting to get this bit put together which is where i'll be doing the outdoor food preparation there is some indoor side of things there which i'll show on another video but this is this is what i've been waiting for we will have it's not here yet and um, we've got an old rusty fire pit there at the moment but effectively that will be where the um log burning cooking is going to go and that'll be kind of the whole off-grid style um just cooking over over the flames basically it's a tripod that i've got on order i'll show you that when it turns up either in the next video or in the kitchen reveal, whichever whichever one comes first. But I just thought it's lovely to start here and give you a little glimpse of what we've been what we've been working on. Typical uh, Stephen's bit of fun there. As we're walking around, you'll see that the kids are helping out this morning. It's um, Easter holidays, so everybody is off. Well, me and the kids are off. Stephen's not off until next week. Um, so they're pulling their weight. They do a heck of a lot of work to help out here because there's a lot to be getting on with. Grace is working in what we call the oil tanker, um, which is basically being full of weeds coming through. And we'd like to get it planted up with beneficial flowers, plants, herbs, whatever it might be. So I'll, I'll give you a quick view on what that looks like now. She's not too thrilled about doing it. Um, but basically there's quite a big space around here. I don't think I've shown this before. Um, and across here, we, as long as we can get some flower seeds put in and some herbs and things put in, I think that'll be a really good use of the space. It's been meshed off before, as you can see, for the chickens. Um, but it was more hassle trying to stop the dogs having a go at the chickens. Um, so we haven't put any in just for now, but she's doing a grand job there. All of this can go on the compost, if you don't mind, Grace, when it's finished. I was asked, um, how do you get the kids to help out? Oh, we pay them, <laughs> it's the only way it'll work. So we are in the car park area now. I've got my notes by the way, that's what the paper is. Um, this is where the horses are still getting turned out because the field will go down to it in just a second. Um, but it's certainly not, it's not not safe for them to go out on, but they will just turn it over and completely ruin it uh, if they go out now. So it's it's really waterlogged still all of the ground. We've, we're due, um, even though we had a frost last night, it got down to minus three. So it was a hard frost last night. Um, we are due a lot more rain again at the end of the week. I mean, it is April showers after all. So I can't see that they'll be going out anytime soon. We've had to put some of the um, extra defence mechanisms up because the horse, the big horse, keeps getting a head stuck. Um, we've we've got some fencing here, which is it's not it's just electric fencing wire, but it's not electric fence, which she normally uh, respects. But for some reason, even though there's no grass there, it's not the grass that she's after. I'm not sure what she's doing to be honest. Um, she keeps getting a head stuck in it and then getting caught and running out. So we've had to put the shavings bales and things there um just so that to you know try and what's the word deter her from do, from going under so literally i could probably put some more wire across here this is the messy side of things um but she goes in the problem was this is why i put the wire up because she's been chewing the forsythia and all of the other stuff and then this bit just becomes a complete swamp and you can't it's just mud and then nothing has chance to grow um there's been some absolutely beautiful snowdrops here and i'm just trying to encourage things to grow again what i'm what i'm going to do is transplant a lot of the wild garlic into this area which i think will be beautiful and you can see through there is where the goats go once they go out we'll have a look at those guys in just a minute um but the grass is starting to grow back through there as well and this is the problem if you're overgrazed, not up, this isn't a paddock, so this has always just been a wooded area. But if you allow things on it for too long, um, then basically it just gets turned over and ruined. And I want to give things a little chance to, to come back. Let's just go and check what was a bit of a commotion in the barn. We will go in there last because there are some surprises that I want to share with you in there. But right now we're going to walk across the... Um, the, the garden across the car park into the garden and into the field uh, so that you can just have a look together what it's looking like and see how things are growing it has been warmer a lot warmer 
Um, even though we've had the frost last night that I mentioned, it has been warmer on some days, but it's been wet, you know, that awful kind of humid type of temperature or um, weather rather. So things are growing. The grass, as you can see the colour of it because of all the rain, is bright green. There's a train as always when I'm trying to talk. <laughs> So things are coming along, it's definitely starting to grow. Um, the nettles are starting to come through again, which I do try and stay positive about, that's stinging nettles, um, because you can use them, but they just get absolutely take over the place. So we'll see. Anyway, we're just gonna go in the field. I'll give you a little look around. This is a sledge because not long ago we had snow and the kids were in here. So this is where obviously, where we're looking at this awful muddy bit is where the animals are in and when they're at the gate in the winter just before we bring them in the barn for the for the over the winter the period um, and this mud just ends up quite bad as you can see it's still I don't know if that's on, coming up on the camera but really really wet so if they came in here now all that would happen is they'd just tear us around excuse my French uh, tear it up and literally just completely ruin it for themselves for the rest of the year so what we're trying to do is make sure that we find the balance of when the right time is to put them out that's the horses I'm talking about yeah when it's the right and time to put them out and um but you know give them plenty of time out but make sure that they've got something to actually graze on to be honest our horses don't come in here for the grazing as such it's more for the exercise and just being out in the fresh air um, because this field is about maybe an acre and a half and that's not enough to sustain them um, all, you know, all the time. So we do supplement the feed. It's not that we're totally reliant on this for the feed or anything. Now this fence here has got some repairs that need doing before the animals come out as well. So we may put, because we've only got two um, sheep now, I'll show you that later, we may put them in with the horses in this field. But you can see this fence is snapped in a few different places and needs repairing. The wire along the bottom there is to when we put the sheep on the other side of the fence. So the sheep will go on here because this gets so overgrown, believe it or not, in the summer. That's why we've stock fenced along there so that we don't have any sheep rolling into the river. And um, once when the sheep come out, we do put them on the other side, but they are notorious for breaking the blooming fence. If you can see, the, we put stock fence, we being Stephen, put the stock fence around just so that it could protect them because they never get the chance to grow because the sheep always chew them. Just as soon as they're at this juicy stage where there's just a few buds come in, they would be in there chewing them and they just wouldn't have a chance. And we've got another couple of trees that didn't make it. I'm not sure if that was the quality of the tree provided or this one here I think that was a plum tree that's it that's a goner so we'll have to replace that and then we've got a couple of hazelnuts down here and what we're going to do because as I say this grass here will grow really quickly um, it'll just smother the trees so we're going to use the molehill soil which is what you can see here and put it around put cardboard around is the no dig method and um, put cardboard around the trees at the base put the molehill soil on the top and hopefully suppress some of the grass around it so they've got a fighting chance of actually growing this year it's a green hazelnut that one and we've got a red which isn't looking as big a red hazelnut here as well i think that just is the color of the leaves oh but it's not looking too bad not looking too bad at all we've got a river that runs along the um well it's the rivers there that you guys obviously know about a beck i should say not a river that runs along here this gets flooded in the height of um, the, the worst weather. This is the tree, one of the trees that came down in the storms. So we can have this for firewood, um, but we just haven't got round to it yet. Now where I'm walking up to now is the pig area from last year and the veg plot. And if you may or may not know, um, we had vegetables that we were growing next to the pig area last year and maybe even the year before I can't remember and ultimately it was just too much for me to take on so we are just working on our vegetable uh, vegetable patch at the top of the uh, property we're not going to be taking on the one at the bottom as well this year so Stephen's convinced me that's the right thing to do and he's right but we are um, going to be having pigs I'll show you that in a second and they will need somewhere to be so it was mentioned in the last video that I wasn't sure where the pigs would go this year but we finally decided. Bye 
why have you been sheared and they haven't? Hmm? So this is where the pigs were last year that we've got the ground membrane down on still. It does keep coming up um, because of the winds and things. So we do have to keep coming in and putting it back down, but it's not done too bad. And it has really suppressed the weeds underneath, which is what we wanted. We didn't just want them to grow back with uh, thistles and nettles. The train. Um, we were thinking about putting a polytunnel on there. Um, eventually, again, it's taken on too much at once that we're trying to avoid because it just gets overwhelming and that's not what we want to do. Um, so we'll see how that goes. But at the moment with the ground membrane on, there's no problems that can just stay there like that. And we, yeah, we'll see. I was going to say we could do this, we could do that, but we'll see. And this is one of Jack's jobs today. So in here is what we grew last year. There are some leftovers, as you can see, but there are also lots and lots of stones all over the place. And what we need to do here is get all of them lined up against that fence where those balls are. Um, so that the pigs can come in and root around and they're not going to end up burying the stones or anything. We're just going to end up moving them out of the way um, and the pigs are going to be in here this year. So I think that was suggested last. It was, was that uh, on the last video? Pretty sure it was. Thank you for the suggestion, my dear. Um, but yeah, the pigs are going to go in there. It is not pig proof at the moment. There is a door on it, a gate, that they will literally... Ah, I'm getting muddy. They will literally just badge through. So Stephen needs to pig proof it. And I guess from that, you realize what's in the barn. <laughs> Despite the sun, it is really, really cold today. I think I said it was minus three last night. It's about eight now, um, but it's really cold. Anyway, so I'm hoping that Jack does a good job when he gets around to doing this. The sheep wool is along the side there, which I had my strawberries in last year. I'm not sure I'm going to even bother digging them out, to be honest. The pigs can just have them, I think. Um, and all of the stones, once they've moved along where the, the sheep wool is, and Stephen can get on and make this safer for the pigs so that they don't come out this door here. Um, and hopefully there'll be a few roots in the ground that they can still enjoy and they can turn this over for us. And we can see in the paddock here, we've got loads of growth. We're going to take care of these thistles. This is on the jobs list for this week. We're going to pop those out. Um, because the, th the thistles are a nightmare but you can see I don't know if you can see the difference since the last one the greenery is just brilliant so this is coming along really nicely this will be for the sheep that we've got left I think we still had the lambs on the last video in January all of the lambs have been processed now um, and we have got one new nettle who is our pet lamb and Carol who came along um, to keep when we lost Dwayne, uh, the other lamb, um, Carol came along to keep Merlin company. So we've still got Carol, still got Nettle, and that we're keeping those too. All of the others have been processed for the freezers, so we've got a lot of work. Um, well, had a lot of work to do to get those done, um, but got a lot of work ahead because I want to do a lot of pressure canning to get a lot of that on. That's a lot, a lot of. I'm going to do some pressure canning um, to get that meat on the shelf so we're not reliant on the freezers. Uh, that's a totally different video though so if you're interested in that do have a look out for it now i'm in where the chickens would normally be and it is deserted because we're still under lockdown unfortunately for the chickens for avian flu but let me show you what's on the list for this week there's so many of these i think it's the beach it's little seedlings but oh actually totally unrelated first of all this is the manure pile out of the shed and i said to grace when she did it last year just put it to the side um, because it can just become the floor in here, the base floor, it'll just rot down and it saves us having to find somewhere else to put it. And it is growing grass, isn't that fantastic? I think we can do that in a lot more of this area just to promote some more grass growth. Anyway, this shed has had nothing in it since we lost the turkeys. At least I hope there's nothing in it. So it is a complete disaster in terms of it needs mucking out, it needs cleaning. So this is on the list for this week as well over the next couple of weeks, should I say. And we're going to put um, diatomaceous earth this so that the, if there's anything in there that's living, any creepy bugs or anything, the chickens can, when they're ready to go back out, which hopefully won't be too long, um, but the chickens will be able to go in there in a nice clean shed with all the straw and everything replaced and taken out. And they'll be able to free range out here and really enjoy it. Things are really starting to come to life. We won't have any more turkeys now. I can't remember if we did on the last video, um, but we processed those as well. We did some of those after Christmas, so we might have um, on the last video, but all of those are in the freezer now. So we have literally got freezers brimming full of meat, which is not a bad place to be. Um, 
but you do need to stay on top of it and stay organised, uh, which is what I'm, another thing that I'm looking at doing for these couple of weeks. Now up here, we've got our muck heaps. This is like the Clampett's yard bit that nobody ever wants you to see. Um, muck heaps, and this is what was a polytunnel um, frame that we were given that we covered in chicken mesh so that we could use it for the ducks. Now Jack is busy working, putting duck straw, putting straw out for the ducks, that's what I was trying to say because they are, as I always say, such filthy creatures, filthy animals. Um, they need fresh straw in every couple of days and they just trample it into the ground. But what we're gonna do with that cage is move that potentially down to where the pigs were, um, down there on the, where the ground, ground membrane is. And I'm thinking we could maybe grow some fruit, fruit in it. Not too sure yet, um, but can't do anything until the ducks are allowed back out um, because again, they're under lockdown at the moment too. So they're just opposite the muck heaps, which is just uh, nice and nice and easy and out of the way. I'm actually stood on the septic tank, <laughs> which if you might remember in the last video was one of the dramas that we'd had on New Year's Day. Stephen and I spent date night out here cleaning out the septic tank. Thankfully, we've had no more dramas on that, um, on that side of things. And that's it, full circle back round from the outside space, back round to where we started. You can go back up through where the ducks were into the orchard and stuff, but we've come back this way um, because I'm gonna now show you what's in the barn. Right, welcome to the barn. Sorry, I've had a little interruption there. Um, we have got new arrivals. It's gonna get noisy. As you hopefully know from one of the previous videos, we have our horses in here. They're not new. So we've got two, a horse and a pony, who are in here. They get out every day in the car park that we've, um, that we've talked about, which is literally just out there next to the greenhouse. But we've also got the two um, ewes, or the two, the two sheep that we talked about, which I'll show you now. So this is Neto. Say hi, Neto. And this is Carol. Carol's much smaller. And the reason she's got a purple dot on her was to identify that she's not going anywhere. I'm sure if you can hear me or not. But Nettle and Carol are locked in a stable now, which actually that stable, we've taken some of the, um, what's it called? This, we've made a hole basically in between the stables. So they've got this stable and that stable. Nettle is always jumping up like so because um, she likes to know what's going on. I understand that and the, the reason that she is a bit knocked off because she can't see what's going on is because this muck heap is what was her bed. What do I mean by that? What on earth is going on, Tracy? I'm just moving some stuff so I can show you. Right, here we had, um, this was an additional part to the stable that Nettle and Carol are currently in. We had this sectioned off and this was the bed that was deep litter in it. You imagine from there across here, where that fork is, there was this pallet was here. So all of this was one big opening, which we just had this stable door into, and they had the run of this area, this stable, and this stable. Well, we've got two new additions that needed a needed a home. Hi, boys. Hello, my darling. Hello, my darling. Hello, my darling. So these two chaps are Gloucestershire old spots. Um, they are full old spots. They don't have the papers that like a pedigree essentially, but that's totally fine by us. And we've got both um, two boys, so both are boars. They are 12 weeks old and we went and picked them up on Saturday. So it's Monday now, so they have only been here a couple of days. And that's why Jack is trying to get those stones out of the vegetable plot so that when Stephen has uh, secured it off, we can get these out there before they get too big. At the moment, we would probably say they're about 25 kilos, um, but 25 kilos to move where it potentially doesn't want to move is, uh, is not easy. So Stephen literally picks them up and moves them, a bit like Grace has picked, picks the little lamb up there. Um, I'll show you them in a sec. He literally bear hugs them and walks them down to where they need to go. So we need to get these guys out before they become too heavy. So it's not necessarily about the weight, but they struggle so much when you pick them up that, you know, it's difficult. Um, so we want to get that done as soon as possible. But they are just enjoying the life in the barn at the moment. They are absolutely perfect. We love them. The character's really nice. They're really funny. They're not aggressive yet. Hopefully they won't become aggressive. Um, and we're really enjoying having them around. <coughs> Mm. 
And look who we have here. We've got Herschel and Glenn. So these two are often lambs that we picked up. Um, actually, I'm just going to turn this heat lamp off. So these are, um, are they a couple of weeks old? Yeah, two weeks. Two weeks old. So these are both boys, and again, we picked them up from a friend. Um, orphans, because they were triplets and the man rejected them, but even so, she wouldn't be expected to look after triplets anyway. And we said we would have them. So we are bottle feeding these every, um, well, every four to, four to five or even six hours now, is it? So Grace is taking care of them. And hello, my sweetie. And these will go outside once the weather warms up with the other, with the other sheep. So Stephen's just made this really small area. This is literally two, <laughs> two doors because um, we weren't expecting to get them. We, we probably knew that we were going to end up getting some lambs, even though we said we weren't going to. None of our, obviously our girls aren't pregnant this year. Um, so we said we weren't going to have any at all this year. But um, it's really nice to have spring lambs on a small holding. So Stephen brought them home after work one day, um, which we kind of expected. So they're only just in a little area at the moment. Um, as I say, Grace is taking good care of these. And as soon as they're able to, they will go out with Nettle and Carol and at least they'll be able to sort of follow what they do with eating and things like that. They are still on the bottle, as I say, but they are starting on the creep food, so the lamb creep food. Um, they're not too sure what to do with it. They've got nobody to kind of watch on how to eat it just yet. Um, but Grace is doing a good job there trying to encourage them uh, to eat and just keeps changing the water and just, just the, because they're actually drinking water, um, even though they're having bottled milk as well, which is a good sign. And next to the lambs, we've just got some of our Brahmas. Um, we're actually letting them go broody. We've got two girls in here who I actually looked at her this morning and thought, are you okay? Because she looked dead, but she's fine. So these two are going broody, um, which is fine. We allow that because they're really good at raising their own chicks. And this is just, again, just while inside, while they're on lockdown, um, this is where we're keeping them. And then finally in the barn, we've got the caged hens, um, which is, again, we can't wait for these to be able to go out. Uh, we're just deep littering these guys as well, putting fresh straw in every few days. Um, food, water, and they lay eggs every day, so they're obviously happy enough, but, you know, they're ready to go out. We're all ready for them all to go out. And the plan is that soon enough, once we get this good weather and the rain has finished, we're going to get the sheep outside, get the chickens back out, get the ducks out in the orchard area that they've been in before which we haven't been to yet um, and hopefully everyone can start enjoying a bit of sunshine again because I know it's it's a lot when everyone's stuck inside they get really fed up um, it's nice to have a barn full of animals but it's even nice to see them in the fields so Grace is just up there cleaning her goats the pigs are just chatting with the goats they're so funny they're looking at each other through the fence These are our two pet dwarf pygmy goats, Apple and Olive. Um, again, Grace looks after these guys. So she is a little bit more of a, a bully, shall we say? That might be too of a strong of a word, but she um, she's not as timid as this one here. She's a bit mean to her at times. So she uh, she plays with her, plays head button. <laughs> uh, purely pets. Um, the pigs. Obviously, they'll be going in the freezer as we'll be getting those to fatten up. Um, the chickens are for eggs. We don't have our meat birds yet. We will be getting meat birds this year. So it's all starting to come together. We will be, hopefully, as we eat through the freezers, we will be ready to fill them back up again. So at the end of the day, that's why we do a lot of this. But these chickens here are all just for eggs. And the barn is just very full and very active. It's absolutely lovely. Grace is going to feed the lambs now and uh, let's have a quick look around the veg plot. I do have the separate videos for the gardening, of course, um, but we'll just have a quick look around. Here today, I haven't actually looked at what the temperature was last night, so minus one and a half in here. It said minus three and a half outside, so things are looking really well. There's a lot of work that I need to get done in here, potting things on, pricking them out, and a lot of things are ready to go outside now, to be honest. So we're going to have a good tidy up and get to... Um, get busy once we've got the things done in the house that we're looking for but the kids are helping and that's uh, really really helpful 
the kale has gone to seed this was the portuguese kale but the black tuscan kale has just shrugged it all off it's absolutely fine so things are starting to to come to grow these are the garlic and onions that i put in i was unsure about these onions but i think they're going to be okay and it's looking really strong so the things that we've got planted are, are thriving quite well um, the, as I say, there's still a lot, lot of work to get done now that the weather's turning and I'm not in a major rush to do it. I'm just pleased that we're able to get outside as much as possible. So once we've got this done, I'm hoping to spend a few hours outside each day. Um, once I've got this video done, I mean, I'm hoping to spend a couple of hours outside and I'll try and do that each day. But the kids have really been helping weeding uh, the beds and things too. And I talked on previous videos as we bring, you saw the muck heap of bed that we're in the middle of bringing out um that's in the barn that was the sheep's bed that i referred to we literally just bring this around our fruit bushes and i'll rake it out just a little bit but it will stay really deep i'll also put it over the raspberries um, and around the gooseberries as well i think it's fascinating to see that some of the gooseberries are coming at different times obviously by design but i just still like to see this is already fully green and the others are just taking the time and catching up we are going to be having lots of rhubarb recipes coming up, which um, this is just, if you've seen it on my other videos, I was waiting for it to start growing and then I blinked and it's just happened. This one here is still not happy, but the rosemary, I'll be cutting some of this and drying it, but to be honest, it lasts all year round. However, I have noticed that there's been the rosemary beetle on it a little bit. I think there's one there actually. Oops. Um, and I'm scared that it's going to kill it off. So I'm going to dry some just in case. Always good to have a backup. And it is starting to come together. You know, I like to show you guys in all of its glory or all of its not glory, but it is, it's starting to come together. We've got quite a bit of work that needs two people in here, which I'm waiting for Stephen to help me with, but he's got his hands full in that outdoor kitchen space. Another thing that's on the jobs list for the kids to help with this week is to hold this area and just try and stay on top of it. So we've got the apricot tree, the almond tree. Um, I'm hoping there's blossom coming there on the almond tree, but obviously with the frost that we've just had, might have killed it off. I haven't really seen any pollinators. There was just the one that I saw recently. Honeyberries. This does me well every year. I think it's just fascinating. Really nice as well. There's two of those because they pollinate each other. But yeah, things are coming on really well in here as well. I won't spend too long because it's not a garden video. I know that people like to see all of it um, and I like to see it changing over the over the months as well. Now we've got the little orchard uh, as we call it the orchard through there where the ducks are there's nothing doing in there just yet um, but we've got apple trees in there which there was a plum tree but unfortunately that I was going to say it passed away <laughs> unfortunately that died um, so we'll just have to see if we can get some i'm looking for more plum trees but everything's super expensive so we're trying to prioritize our spends um it would be nice to be able to get some more plums though because i absolutely love them however last year we did forage for some mirabelle plums and um, there are a lot of those yellow ones that you see um out and about so if nothing else we can do that this year as well and that's the veg plot i feel like we've whizzed around there I think maybe i like, waffled on a lot more on the last one I hope you've enjoyed it. This is just what the small holding looks like now. I thought it would be good to capture it um, at the beginning of April and then maybe again at the beginning of May when the animals will hopefully be out enjoying the grass, enjoying the sun on the backs and not being stuck in the barn, which it's nice for them to be in the barn. I do like that feeling over winter, but when it's like this, you just want things to be out enjoying it, even though it is still really cold. Anyway, I hope you've enjoyed the tour. Um, a little look around on this Monday morning on the first day of my holidays. I thought it was the perfect way to start it. Give the video a thumbs up if you don't mind, if you've enjoyed it, that is. And uh, I'll see you on the next one.